That's via Zoom. Uh, so I guess this time we'll do the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. Soon we're turned on. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so I think we're all here. The only people here are here for the reasons where it's on the agenda, so I'm not going to go through my spill with if anybody got anything. So, um, looks like uh, we need to do a little house cleaning on the roof project that we have, uh, and not necessarily the roof project we have as far as uh, replacing the roof, as far as the construction part of it. We need to probably go back and declare. Uh, I'm being told in an emergency situation so that we can, I guess, uh, proceed legally uh, use some IC codes that says that we can circumvent uh, vendor approvals and, and not what. Is that correct, Mr. Attorney? I would not phrase it as circumvent, but uh, well, it would be we are not, we are not under the uh, specific requirements for public purchasing and public works uh, for amounts that exceed the uh, $150,000 threshold. Yeah, probably wasn't very good. Or 100 to 150, it's, it can be either of those. Um, so effectively, I mean, but yes, that's correct. And then I think as for context, Correct me if you guys remember better than I do because I was sick at a couple of those meetings that were occurring around the time that uh, we first received notice of some of the uh, potential issues with the roof. But uh, there was a special joint meeting of the council and commissioners following a uh, emergency session for the commissioners uh, at which it was discussed that uh, we would I think there were a couple of things that were discussed it was potential use of ARPA money but also um, setting up the courthouse the setting up part. the courthouse there have been some, a couple kind of corollary issues that we've dealt with as we've gone but I think everything was done with the understanding that at that first meeting, uh, the structural engineer who was uh, available via telephone basically informed us that there was an imminent issue regarding the roof, um, particularly I think the weight per square foot, if I remember correctly, and that um, yeah, it's 15 had some pounds safety per questions foot. and other things. Um, and uh, I think following that, Judge Mount issued a Okay. emergency declaration order for the purposes of continuation of court services and hearings um, and uh, after talking with the structural engineer and realizing kind of the serious and immediate need that we were under uh, there I think was a uh, consensus that this was an emergency situation um, but in order to affirm that uh, consensus we want to make sure that we uh, actually declare this to be an emergency situation for the purposes of special purchases uh, under the Indian Code. If I might add counsel that on April 22nd 2022 that date was referenced by Judge Mount yeah. of that Commissioner and Council joint session and also at your Table there, 420 to 429 were the dates covered by DLZ. So I think April 20th might be the better date to go with. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And I just want to clarify something when I said circumvent, which means sometimes you could say you're trying to skirt the law or whatever. Sure. And I uh, would like to change that, that to the to the point where I'm, you know, we're doing everything legally here. Um, and probably above board uh, yeah, every step. We, so we've taken you all have taken some steps to make sure that we got a 
smooth uh, transition to get the design release um, from the structural engineers. Uh, Were you copied on that? I don't. It was sent yesterday. yesterday so. Okay, I don't think I was copied. I'll, I'll send that to you. But following that, uh, we've done what's required for the purposes of submitting uh, the design specifications to the Indiana Department of Homeland Security and are just awaiting a uh, design release. And uh, so we're going through all the steps of the wood and have not you know, made any final determination at this time. Okay. Which particular group you would be? I just sent that to them. Yeah. They said it would take seven to ten days to to get that release. So, uh, so anyway, I guess at this point, um, you talking about the Homeland Security seven ten days. The um, the so I think this engineer design re release was sent from our, our structural engineer and it was sent to the state to get a release so that we can proceed with the project we're doing. So I think specifically it's Indiana Code 5-22-10-4A that discusses purchasing agents for purchasing agencies, which um, you all are the purchasing agency for the county. Um, if, you were to approve this as a declared emergency, particularly, I think, in this case, it would be a safety issue, basically, um, for members of the courthouse. Um, we can move forward with the next steps in the process. So is this by just us saying it is, or okay. do we can Move do we to have to have like a ordinance, a document, or anything? We just say. I think, uh, Randy, are you hearing all this? Uh, yeah, we went solid there just for a second. But. So I think that we will need to have a written determination of the basis. There a resolution um, and order? There's, there's no, necess not necessarily by resolution or ordinance. Declaration of? But just a declaration of emergency. I think a resolution is so we can pass time. Okay. We can yeah. verbally say it today, pass it, and then on the 11th when we just come back, we document. can sign a document then. Um, but the written determination will need to be kept in the file um, for the purchase with the contract um, and any, any related materials. I know that there's some separate work being done that we're not necessarily talking about. We're really talking about the structural repair part. Repair part. Okay. All right. Well, uh, so I guess we just declare it. To be and and then Tammy you, would Zach would you write that up or would Tammy write that? Up? I can write write it yeah. up. Okay, so I guess I'll entertain a motion to declare an emergency status for um, the structural part of the damage in the in the roof system. So, and uh, I, I, I'm all for that. I'm is that just like I'm not sure what that allows us to do outside to get started. Is that what it does? Um, it suspends the requirements under the regular purchasing laws. So um, particularly that notwithstanding any other provision of this article, um, a purchasing agent may make a purchase under this chapter without soliciting bids or proposals. So normally, um, if time was not of the essence, if we didn't have a safety issue like we do, um, when doing public works, you would do or a, a, a project that would exceed 150,000, you would um, go through the steps for soliciting uh, sealed bids from vendors, either for a public work or a purchase of materials. In this case, this is a special purchasing method that falls outside the scope of that particular requirement. I still think that um, you consider prices and things like that before you. Well, we, just to clarify that, I think the only thing that would have been different is if we took sealed bids. We did go to 
two two different people and, and get quotes, and then we took the lesser of the two. I, mean, I don't so, think we've approved any of that. Yet. So we so won't have to do any sealed bids if we declare this an emergency. We can just hire somebody. Correct. Because that that there's a special provision in public purchasing Indiana Code section that allows for you to expedite. It's 522-10 is the full uh, addressing chapter. an issue, right? Um, and it would be sections one through twenty, one through twenty. So it deals with a number of different types of situations that might apply. It would be uh, emergency conditions, savings to governmental bodies, auctions, data processing contracts or license agreements, single source of supply. Purchasing method would impair the function uh, of an agency, which in this circumstance may be also particularly applicable because it's impairing the ability of the circuit court to. Yeah. And if we hire somebody, that doesn't necessarily, that bid isn't necessarily something they can't go over. It's basically a bid that we're going to try to do within this price. I mean, bids are not locked in at that price, are they? Uh, I believe they are. So yeah. if they can't go over that price without our approval, there's, there's I a, thought there was there's a deviation section. Um, to answer that question, I would need to review that. But. I mean, that's kind of common for people to quote a price and then come in later and go, "Hey, you know, didn't I missed this?" Or well, common, I would say, correct in private bidding. Well, not private, but when you're That's correct. I mean, there are alterations, but usually that's that criteria for determining like the, how much you can go up or down deviate is contained somewhere inside of the bid. Okay. Um, will, it says here, and, I, and this is yeah, through okay. Thomas, is all work quoted money through fire with a normal business access to area work must be uninterrupted to avoid additional charges. Uh, and it's uh, Thomas to require a third payment with PO, third payment upon completion, third and a third within 30 days. So uh, looks to me like it's provide labor equipment materials. So I don't know how much deviation. I mean, let's say we know what it is. So this would be like a just. I have to say now. Okay. So um, on on their terms, like uh, Jason said that. That, that's just basically how they normally, he normally writes it up, but that's negotiable on the terms. I'm sure it, I, that's fine. I mean, I was just trying to get at the point that this quote, bid, or whatever you want to call it, is a factual number, and that's what they're planning on charging us. So. Does it, yeah. Does their quotes have to the bids or whatever they they have to, since this is go, has to go through the state or whatever, does they have to? Those have to go presented to them, the state, to know how they're doing it, or is that just the engineer part? The engineer part, uh, they had to put a an estimate of what the project cost was, and I, you know, um, I think that was like two hundred thousand dollars what we put on that. I mean, it's because, and I say that because of of what I guess to be on the high side right. of to say that that's what. Uh, royalty roofing came in with 218 I mean but so that's why you know I just told him an estimate of two hundred thousand dollars so yeah. if it goes under that I don't know what the big whoop would be I mean I mean I don't even know what the what the whoop of the price of it is anyway to the state I mean especially on the engineered project what whether they care what it is or not I mean there's just a blank there so so I guess uh, John I mean did that answer your question I think so. Uh, I, I don't. I've read this, and it, it's, I think it says they're going to do everything, but it doesn't get down to the nitty gritty of what they're going to do. It basically says we'll do the work for less than a hundred thousand dollars. Yeah. And um, and I, I, they've done a lot of other kind of work, haven't they, Randy? I'm sorry. Hasn't Thomas me. done a lot of other kind of construction work? Oh yeah, yeah. I mean. I'm just curious. I thought Tom, they had Tom, two, but I don't know of anything they, what they've done. 
Yeah, they, they've done all kinds of construction work. I mean, you know, they they can anything, they can build factories. I mean, and and have built uh, additions on the factories. Uh, they set cranes um, all the time. It's they definitely have the ability to pull us off okay. and the equipment. Okay. So I think Mike called for a motion about declaring emergency effective April the 20th based on the, I guess, that's one the opinion the, of an engineer that we had a structural emergency. That actually is that Tuesday after, I think the 19th was yeah. on a Monday and we had him here Tuesday. So. Tuesday. Is that the good day then? I, I would, Thank I'm you. comfortable with that. Okay. Okay. So you need a motion, you ask for a motion? I'm, I'm requesting or asking someone to make a motion to accept um, a declaration of emergency status for the for the courthouse uh, roof uh, damage construction, I'll say. That, now you said effective back to what day? 420, yes. uh, 22. I'll make that motion. And I'll second. Randy makes that motion, or, Randy, or John seconds that, and I'll make that unanimous. So, I guess uh, for everybody's information, we'll we'll have that document drew up, and then on our July 11th meeting, we'll uh, sign that. But we've already ratified it. So, okay. All right. Uh, second thing on here is the vendors for roof structural repair. Uh, I guess. Uh, I know last time we talked about Thomas Plastics and we also talked about Royalty Roofing. Or Royalty Roofing had a price of, if I remember right, two eighteen, two hundred eighteen thousand dollars to do uh, the roof removal down to the original roof and to uh, structurally support and repair the beams. Um, I thought that was a little high on my end, or what I thought, and so I'd actually ask Royalty to go back and ask Josh to reach out to Royalty and have them give us a quote for only roof removal. Um, and they did, and I think that was $65,000. $65, so if everybody's fine with this, I mean, I'd, I'd like to go with Thomas Plastic uh, Machinery Incorporated for the, for the Securing the 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 seal or the roof beam and then repairing the roof beam after the roof has been removed, and to have royalty remove the roof. So, if anybody's uh, got any comments, input no, or what? Well, no, I I like the fact that we're doing this for less than half what the previous bid was, and I really like the idea of somebody local doing it. Yeah. So, if you need a motion, I'll make it. I'll entertain a motion for if we want to group them together because I mean it's one project. I think. Yeah. So John's going to group them together, Randy. So John's yeah. going to John's going to go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead, Randy. I'll I'll make a motion for them, except um, the the two uh, entities mm -hmm. okay. doing work. All right. So Randy makes a motion to accept Thomas Plastic Machinery Incorporated to do the do the uh, floor support and then repair the, the damaged uh, beam and then uh, also to hire royalty roofing to remove the roof yeah. after the floor has been secured, I guess, or the ceiling has been secured, the beam has been secured, and then royalty can come in and take the roof off down to the primary roof, primary decking. So, John? And, uh, I'm, I'm, oh, I'm sorry. Randy made the motion, and John seconds that, and I'll make that unanimous. Okay, now. Um, make sure that for all of the votes today that they're recorded um, uh, by roll call. Okay. So, uh, because we are, this is actually our first meeting that we are Zooming. taking advantage of the alterations in the statutes that allow for uh, less than 50 percent of the governing body to appear via Zoom. In these types of meetings, we have to record uh, information regarding who is present and who is present via Zoom. That they are present via means that they can be seen and heard, and all votes must be taken via roll call vote. Okay. So I'll back up here. We both. I Randy, apologize for No, you're fine. Randy made a motion. John seconded that, and I made it unanimous. So I guess I'm going to ask everybody to vote. So all in favor of the motion? Uh, 
We'll do Randy first. Randy. Aye. aye. John. Yeah, I'm. I'm in favor. And I'll say aye as well. So, so are we good there? All right. And, and, and to explain what Zach's talking about is that uh, in the last year they passed a law to where members of the council and the commissioners can't could have a Zoom meeting and 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 one of the members be not present and could vote, but it had to be there were stipulations of why and how you could do that. So that's that's why we just did that. So. I would like to as soon as they get started. I would like the first thing they do is put the support beams up next door here. And so what I was going to suggest is before we do those things, um, I would like to just communicate that to the Ken. Oh, Ken Cole? Just to, for him to say. He was copied on the engineer, so he knows it's went to the state. Okay. And he told me that he would walk it through, so okay. to make sure there's no well, problems. Okay. Before it, so. somebody, I'm not saying that you. Oh, we can't. That's why yeah. we can't do anything until we get that back. So okay. okay. So I guess it's just so people know that with the two, instead of having the one price, it'll be like saving like fifty-three thousand dollars. So, It'll be a savings. So yeah. They do know. They, yeah, there is a savings. And, and there was not just two. We did have three or four people, but two or two of them said. Actually, too when big. they looked at it, they was like, "No." Just so people know, we did reach out to other. Oh, there was, there were two other, other contractors besides the two that had yeah. gave a bid. I think yeah. there were some that just could do, that do they work did. and like not necessarily this job, but they had other jobs. They had other jobs. Were, yeah. One of them came in so it was too yeah. big. Just, yeah. So we right. we did shop people. around. I mean, it it wasn't that we just found somebody. So you know, and the, what I found out was it wasn't that they didn't want to do it because they're just too busy doing it right now. Yeah. yeah. And well, one and they're short of help. Yeah, one of them was short of help, and the other one uh, yeah. said he was busy building houses. Yeah. So, so, you so know, we I, did do our due diligence. I, I believe. Yeah. Uh, Randy, I know you said earlier, and I'm going to let Zach answer your question about um, setting. I guess have Thomas come in and set the set the beams and stuff. Set the beams and stuff. Or you know the sports and well, stuff. Well, so I'm saying we could, yeah, set the supports and then once the supports are set, Royalty Richard can come on in and uh, get the deck king off and, and get the shingles off, and then at that point uh, we can see where we're at and start. Go ahead and order the LVL. Well, I will clarify that or, or just add on to what you said I, I i think what i see part of that is that if we can if we can use thomas to to support it they're not going to touch the beam but they're going to support it and then at that time royalty could take the roof off which has nothing to do with the structural engineer part of this i mean yeah and i think that the this the my only question or i guess in the reading into some of the communications with Indiana Department of Homeland Security was that their specific requirement dealt with structural alterations That's or alterations that might affect the structural integrity of the building or the roof or piece or part of the building. Uh, so that I don't think that's a separate, the other work that's being performed is a different issue. Uh, mm -hmm. The So you'd be comfortable with having Thomas come in, put their supports up, not moving the beam or anything, just supporting uh, the structure, and then letting, because see, Royalty said they wouldn't get on the roof until it, they had those supports in place. I would want to clear that with that that's okay. I don't see why that would not be okay, I guess, from yeah. you're not, again, making alterations to the building. Uh, I'll ask Mr. Cole. But I think you're doing it in an attempt to protect the integrity of the building while also allowing the work that is installed to continue that does not affect the structure. I mean, I, I could not see why that would be an issue, but I think while we're waiting in this design release process that I think best practice is to run those kind of okay. uh, I'll reach out to him. Well, actually, I'll send him an email and I'll copy everybody in on it. So my, my question too is when they wrapped all this, like put the covering on, um, 
after they started, and then we you drove by and saw that. When they tear all that down to those initial one bys or one by twelves or whatever they are, um, I assume that they'll wrap it again. But it's they're that going to wrap. That's in part of that the process. Going to be once they start, you know, cranking up and jacking. Is it going to mess the top up to where they have to wrap it again? No, that. Well, amazing. I don't know about that. I don't. I don't because like right now we're not leaking, yeah. so I don't, oh, I get I don't want them to do it and then all of a sudden we get a bad yeah, I get that. storm in the I don't, Well, I don't see royalty being here tomorrow. I see, you know, they're going to be a week out. Right. So it's going to be just maybe a few days that they're going to be in an advantage to doing something that's, you know, to my opinion. But, but they, are, they will put another coating. Well, that's what in. I figured, but I didn't want it to be like that. If they put some on it, then they got to tear it back off once they start jacking it up and putting new back down. Yeah, it's like, to answer like, your question, I have no idea. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that didn't answer the question. <laughs> so anyway, all right. Well, then well, I guess we've done that. So let's move on to the last thing here. Go ahead. Go ahead, Randy. Respect roofing company. I would respect the roofing company that parts thinking of in that situation. Okay. Well, it's not like royalty doesn't know what what process we're going to go through here. So I mean, exactly. So anyway, all right. On the third thing here, consideration of the claim payment to DLZ for five thousand eight hundred ninety-eight dollars and eleven cents. This actually, to clarify for everybody, uh, this was the original uh, engineer that we called uh, when we found out that we had a broken beam, and uh, Mr. Mr. Elliot. Actually, his name was Elliot, wasn't it? Elliot Allen. Elliot Allen, that's correct. Elliot Allen came down, you know, pretty fast. He was here the next day. He gave us a, a lot of it, a good information and uh, and uh, just felt like uh, we needed to go in a different direction because of just timetable, I guess. He was talking several months, and, and it's been several months now, but not because of him or anything else. But, but anyway... Uh, this is for uh, the original uh, drawings and and stuff from his company. So if anybody, I'll entertain a motion to accept this payment to him. Five thousand eight hundred ninety-eight dollars eleven cents. That correct? From Arca. Yeah, I I'll make that motion. John makes a motion to accept the the, the or to pay the uh, invoice for DLZ con engineering for. I Randy? I second that. Randy seconds that, and I'll make that unanimous so we can get him paid. Again, this money's coming out of ARP, ARP money, ARP money. So, do we, need to, do, we need to do another vote on that? Was this for the body? It's, it's paying for this kind of voice. Um, I would do the roll call again. approval again. Okay. All right, because of the Zoom call, we're going to do a roll call here. Uh, Randy, how'd you vote? Randy? What was your, what was your question? Uh, we got to do a roll call vote because you're on Zoom. So how do you how do you vote on paying this invoice? I, I agreed to pay the invoice through ARC money. All right. PBM. John? Yeah, I agree to pay the invoice $5,898.11 to DLZ for the work done. All right, I'll make that unanimous. I, I agree too. So, so there we go. We're official. And uh, I have one other thing. And obviously, I'm not asking for any action, but I did want to let you know that um, I believe that there are obviously we've moved the circuit court to the Mass Park mm -hmm. uh, area, and I think though the area that we've reserved on a regular basis is sufficient for most of the court operations. There are some jury trials that will be scheduled for next month. Obviously, I think the court will still be located out there um, at that time. And the there will need to be some additional space for the purposes of jury selection. Um, for that, I think you have already 
um, after looking at things and actually having uh, sound input from uh, Tammy that uh, you've already approved expenses as related to the core operations over there to be submitted um, and paid out of the ARPA funds. But just to let you all know that there is, in this instance, just going to be a potential like additional uh, uh, request or, or claim or payment, uh, all of the above, for that additional space for a brief window of time. And then it will go back to the normal uh, occupied space. And then it could obviously come, come up down the road. But, um, well, maybe the mayor won't charge us. I think it's a. I think it's a. Two hundred and fifty dollars. Two hundred and fifty dollars minimum. Minimum payment. Yeah. Okay. Jury selection. So that two hundred fifty per day or. No, just the. I think it's for a uh, window. Yes, a reservation. Let me. Okay. That's that's what if if the jury trial is not. Yeah. Activated, I'll call it or whatever. All we stand to spend is two hundred fifty dollars. If the jury trial does go, it could be. For how many days it is, they'll they'll be a charge. Uh, I think I've got an email in there that kind of outlines it, um, but there's about three or four, isn't there, Zach? That could come to. Well, the way an intersection that works is that uh, you'll have multiple cases kind of stacked on a. docket for a particular trial day and um, you may have some cases that say you know call ready for trial versus others that maybe are still working through some mm -hmm. potential issues or whatever or or um, could also be resolved mm -hmm. right prior to trial um, so that all depends on a lot of things that obviously we uh, don't know about but um, it is a it is a per day um, charge of $500. Um, normal deposit would be 250, but there may be the potential to waive that if they learn soon enough of the, uh, that there will not be a trial going, but that all depends on things that are kind of outside of um, the county's uh, control. And I don't think we'd have a lot of choice. We'd have to pay it. I think uh, that's that's it'd, it'd be kind of nice to know how much. And it's just there's, since it's tied to this relocation due to the emergency. And that would be ARPA money too? The, yes. It's all tied to the, uh, yeah. Okay. Zach, will you commun that, communicate that to the judge? I will. Okay. Yes. All right. Uh, that's everything on the agenda. Has anybody got John? You got anything else? No. Randy, you got anything else? No, I don't. Just my Tammy, you got anything? I don't, sir. Thank you. Yes, sir. Marty, you got anything down there? No. Good. Zach, <laughs> you got anything? I have nothing. All right. I guess I'll entertain a motion to adjourn the meeting. I'll make a motion to adjourn. I second that. John made a motion to adjourn Randy second. I'll make that unanimous. So do we have to do that by voice vote? All in favor? <laughs> Raise your hand. I'm for it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We got Kill the owl. <laughs>